Hey, welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm going to be doing an update video to my x86 install as a lot of people are having issues with it. So we have a bit of ground to cover, so let's get started. If you want to check out the previous video of me installing Home Assistant on an x86 and see all the background or hear all the background information on UEFI and what all that entails. There'll be a link popping up just over here. So as I mentioned, this is an update to my x86 install video as a lot of people are running into some issues with Helena Etcher. So a lot of what I say in this video still remains true. And that is that you are going to need a system that is 64-bit capable and is able to boot using UEFI. So I am using Ubuntu 22.04. I downloaded it and imaged it to my USB. I'm using a 4 gigabyte USB. I'm also using an additional USB which holds the download which we can see here so you just copy this right click and go to that and it will download the image and i am using belena etcher version 1.18 so you just scroll down to this list and find the app image click on it and it will download so the app image and the Home Assistant image is put on the separate USB device. So unfortunately, uh, I'm using a laptop to put Home Assistant onto. Uh, I like the laptop because it's kind of like a crash cart built all into one. You have a keyboard, a trackpad, although you don't really use a mouse or trackpad, but you have a built-in UPS monitor and keyboard. So that's always nice to be able to jump into the terminal. And unfortunately, depending on the device that you're going to use, you will have to do a Google search to figure out how to put your device into UEFI boot mode and disable secure booting. You have a couple of options to get the Home Assistant image onto your device of choice. In my case, the laptop, I'm not going to pull the hard drive out to image this Home Assistant image onto it. So that is why I'm using Belena Etcher so that I can flash the Home Assistant image onto the drive without having to take everything apart. Okay. So, sorry, I do apologize. The screen capture device that I use for my laptop uh, isn't able to capture the boot process. I did capture the boot process in my original video, so you can check that out if you want to see what I'm doing there and how I'm configuring the BIOS for my specific laptop that I am using. So I am just booting it up, and once we get onto the desktop of the Ubuntu Live environment on the laptop, I will switch over to it. I will have to make a couple of configuration changes because it's picking up my screen recorder as a second monitor. So I'm just going to mirror the displays so that you can see what I am doing. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we don't want to click on this try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. We want to X out of this installer. The screen's going to go blank. It's going to go to the terminal and then it's going to boot back up. So we want to click the X and then we want to confirm that we want to quit the installer. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to change the display settings here so that it is mirrored so you can see what's going on. I do apologize for the display for whatever reason. I guess I'm going to have to invest in a new screen capture device uh, as we're getting some discoloration. Okay, so in order for this to work, I have plugged in a network cable. 
because we are going to require an internet connection. Now I'm going to install the other USB device that has my Home Assistant and Belena Etcher images on them. So if we go to that, we just want to make sure that our Belena Etcher, if we go into the permissions, we want to make sure that this execute allow executing file as program is selected, which will allow us to run it. Now, right now, if I was to run it, this thing is going to silently fail. We're not going to see anything. And if you ever want to figure out what's going on, uh, if we go into the terminal, we'll make that bigger. Uh, so if we go into the terminal, we can see our app image here. So if we enter this command period forward slash, and then type in part of the command that we want to run, which is Belena Etcher, and then hit tab, it'll auto complete. So now if we hit enter, we're going to see that the app image requires fuse to run. So in order to run that, we're going to have to add a repository. And I, in my original video, I pinned the comment and the comment comes from a Ricardo Kalina. And I apologize if I butchered your name, but as he states in his comment, uh, we have to add a repository called universe. So that's going to be with this command, sudo add get repository. And the repository is universe. And then hit enter. Sorry. It's add, not add get, it's add apt. APT. And then hit enter. And just hit enter again. So that is going to add that universe repository to our live environment. Perfect. So we'll just clear the screen here so that it's not so congested. And now we can go ahead and install the libfuse2 package. And that is with apt get install libfuse2. All right, so now with that package installed, uh, we can either run that same command like this and hit enter, and it will open up Belena Etcher, and we won't have any issues running it. So I will just quit out of the terminal here. Well, actually, if I quit out of the terminal, it's going to kill the app image of Belena Etcher. Not a problem. Uh, now we can just double click on our app image and it will load it up as well. So from here, we want to select our file, which is our image that we downloaded for Home Assistant. And we want to select our target. And just remember again, because this is a system drive, it's hidden. So it's going to throw some errors um, telling us that this is dangerous and it's going to erase the drive, but this is exactly what we want to do. So we will select our system drive and then we will hit flash. It'll give us another warning. And yes, I'm sure I want to do this. And it will start to flash the device. Okay, so I am having a problem with my partitions. So just bear with me here. We'll open up parted. I've been playing around with Arch Linux, so I'm going to have to remove these partitions. And 
actually I'm going to have to go to F disk to do this. But I can remove these partitions. We will save those changes. And just bear with me one more time here while I go to the terminal. You won't have to do this. Okay, we'll go back to G parted and just make sure that we have a partition. And we're just going to make sure that it's the full size. I'm going to add that partition and apply those changes. It's fine. And I'll just go back through this process, selecting my image, selecting my drive, and flashing. Okay, one last time, sorry about that. It was, wasn't deleting the partition because I left fully the etcher open. So we're going to select our Home Assistant image. We're going to select our drive and we're going to hit flash. So we will just let that flash and verify. And as soon as it is done, we'll continue on. Okay, perfect. So we have successfully flashed our device and it verified the image. So we can just quit out of Polina Etcher now. And now what we want to do is restart. So it's going to ask us to remove our USB devices and then press enter. So we will go ahead and remove our USB devices and hit enter. So in the background, what's happening is Home Assistant is installing. We just have to wait for it to finish installing. And then if you have your network hooked up to your device, it will give you an IP address. And we just have to enter that IP address into our web browser and we will start the Home Assistant onboarding process. So as I mentioned, once Home Assistant has installed, we just enter in the IP address here that it gave us at port 8123 and hit enter. And we see this screen here where it says preparing Home Assistant. Just be patient while it does this setup. It says that it can take up to 20 minutes, but it usually takes a lot less time. So as soon as we get to the entering our user information, I will bring the video back. Okay, so here is the standard Home Assistant onboarding. Uh, you just have to enter in a name. We'll just call it test. It will give a username of test. We'll give a super secure password. And hit create account. Alternatively, if you are restoring from a backup, as it says here, you can click on this and then load your backup. 
but we will just hit create account and we will hit next. Oh. It requires us to select our country. Let's just pick anything. As far as analytics go, I recommend turning these on because if you're using an add-on, it's nice for the Home Assistant development team to see everything that you're using because if they don't see statistics on an add-on, they might deprecate that add-on. So good practice to let them know what you're using. And you can see here by clicking this link how they use your data. We'll just hit next and then hit finish and there we go home assistant is now installed well that's a wrap folks if you made it to the end of the video congratulations you deserve a medal or at least a slice of cake thanks for sticking with me and supporting the channel by subscribing i hope you had as much fun watching this video as i had making it leave your thoughts in the comments and i'll see you in the next video goodbye